Oh my goodness. <gasps> Thank God that shit show's over. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you have never been here before, my name is Emma Tamsin Hill. Thank you for joining us today. I make content all about fashion, lifestyle, you know, I give you advice. I'm basically just your big sister, your best friend on the internet. We haven't met, but maybe one day. It's a new year. New year, new me. So today I basically just wanted to come and talk to you all about some things that I learned in 2020. I wanted to like round off the year. I know it's probably, what's the date today? Well, it's the fifth today. You'll probably see this tomorrow on the sixth. It's the sixth of January. And you know, we've had a few days to get over Christmas and get over New Year's. Now we're in the whole New Year, New Me section of January, which is fucking thrilling. But I just thought I'd come and tell you some of my main takeaways and main lessons that I learned in 2020 because I felt, I feel like 2020 was a very big learning year for a lot of us. I mean, let's, 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 let's not be around the bush. 2020 was shit. It was a fucking shit show from start to finish. 2020 was pretty shit for a lot of people. I mean, a whole global pandemic that a lot of people died from, a lot of people were severely affected by, in amongst a whole heap of other things. I was doing some reflecting the other day on my year and, you know, just writing down some things that happened in the year, things I was proud of, just reflecting on the year in general. And I thought of 10 things that I could come and tell you guys that would probably help you going forward and just 10 things that I learned. So hopefully you're gonna take something away from this. Hopefully it's gonna make you feel like, yeah, actually, make you see a new point of view, make you think about things. I don't know, I might be talking shit as per usual, but it's cute, right? So I've got my notepad here and I'm gonna tell you 10 things that I learned in 2020. In fact, before we even get into this, I think, I think I need a shot. No. Well, <laughs> no, maybe I should. Maybe I should, I'm feeling a bit. Oh my God, I was about to say I'm feeling a bit anxious, like alcohol will make it 10 times worse. Okay. Oh, I haven't missed that. My first thing I learned in 2020 was to take each day, one day at a time. Be present and move with life. I feel like a lot of us can get so stuck in like, either looking at the past and thinking, oh my God, why did this happen? This happened to me and this happened to me and this happened and this happened. Or we can be so stuck in the future, like I'm nervous about this, I'm anxious about this. Is this gonna happen? Am I gonna do this? Am I gonna do that? Instead, why don't we just live right here? Right here. A lot of the time it's a lot less overwhelming to just be present. As well, if you are not present, you're just missing everything around you that's happening. You're missing all the good parts. You're missing all the lessons that life is trying to teach you. We really neglect the present and we're always looking forward, like I said, or, or looking backwards. Another point that I'm gonna get onto is like nothing is certain. Like if last year taught us anything, it was that nothing is certain. What you think you know about life, <laughs> erase it baby, throw it out because nothing is certain so you have to move with the times one day at a time and when i was really struggling like in the mid mid part of the year something that really helped me was just to think like it's just one day at a time just take it one day at a time each day as it comes don't be worrying about the future don't be worrying about the past just take each day one day at a time the second point that i learned in 2020 and it, this is one i still need to listen to more often perfection is not real and it will hinder you to try and achieve it all the time. I myself, I'm a perfectionist and it's, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's not a good trait to have because I hold myself to a certain standard. Who the hell is this? Anyway, as I was saying, I'll behave. Just check it. This guy has some cheek. This guy has the audacity is out of this world. I'm not saying don't strive for your best. I'm not saying don't strive to do things as perfectly as you can but perfection in itself, there is no perfect. So you're constantly striving for something that doesn't even exist. You keep pushing yourself and pushing yourself, being so hard on yourself for something that you're never gonna achieve. You can't attain it because no one can. Nobody or nothing in this world is perfect. Not to anyone, not to anyone, not to everyone anyway. Perfection is a lie, it's like a myth. And trying to force yourself to be perfect all the time or trying to force yourself to do so many things, juggle so many balls, it's not attainable, it's not gonna happen. And you're gonna burn yourself out doing that and you're also gonna end up hating yourself. Because if you are, you're holding yourself up here, you can't even see it, up here, you're holding yourself up there and it's just, you can't get there. So you're always gonna be disappointed, especially in yourself if you're a perfectionist with yourself and you're hard on yourself, you're always gonna feel like there's more, you need to do more, 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 more. Where is the point where it's enough? 
Do you know what I mean? So you need to appreciate yourself. I'm getting into a whole different topic now, but you need to appreciate yourself and just know, know within your heart of hearts, you can try so hard at something, it can be amazing. Perfection isn't real. Don't try and achieve it because you won't, it sounds so morbid, but I just mean like, don't hold yourself to impossible standards that nobody could fit. Three, 2020 taught me to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. As a lot of you know, I started therapy this year. Uh, I went through, I mean, I went through a lot of shit. <laughs> I went through an emotionally abusive relationship which included gaslighting and a lot of things that were very confusing to me at the time in amongst me going through a depression and a bunch of other shit. Actually seeking out therapy this year and taking a plunge and doing that was at first very uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable to go and seek that help and admit to myself and I'd say out loud to someone else that I was struggling and I needed help. But it has also been the most rewarding thing I've done. I think I've been doing therapy, therapy for around six months now and it's helped me so much because it's helped me, it's not, it doesn't fix all your problems, but it um, it helps you deal with things better. You see a broader sense of you, you get a better grasp of yourself, why you act a certain way, why you feel a certain way. And now if I start to feel anxious, if I start to feel a certain emotion that is confusing to me or that doesn't resonate, I can now question myself, bring it back and be like, okay, why do I feel like this? What has triggered this? What has triggered that? You become so much more self-aware and knowing yourself and learning about yourself is, ultimately going to be so rewarding because when you know yourself better you can communicate with other people better you can just live your life in a better way obviously i know not everyone has the means to be able to go to therapy this is just something that is on my personal journey if you follow me on instagram i did a therapy q a quite a while back but it is on a highlight so head over there and look at that highlight if you're interested in knowing more about therapy or where you can potentially go or talk to someone or where you can seek it out if you want to go through the NHS and stuff like that. So go over there to look at that. Number four, you will waste so much of your life worrying about what other people think about you. I really feel like that needs no more explanation. You will just fucking waste your time sat worrying about what people think about you, what they think about how you look, what they think about what you're doing. You need to do what makes you happy. The only person living your life is you. You are the one that's got to be in here 24 seven. You need to make it a nice place for yourself. You don't need to do things to appease other people, to please them. The only person you need to please is yourself, which is another point I'm going to get onto. You have to learn that for yourself because if you're constantly trying to please other people, you're constantly trying to impress people, you're constantly worrying about what are people talk saying about you, what are they looking at you for, what do they think about this? Who cares what they think? That's on them. And if people think bad things about you, it's kind of like, that they have to live with that. They have to have those negative thoughts in their head. You're not the one that has to have the negative thoughts in your head because it's not permeating your mind, it's permeating their mind. Number five, routine is so important. And I really feel like 2020 taught me this because especially we had all the freedom. <laughs> we didn't have any freedom, but I mean the freedom of being at home more, being on lockdown, working from home, whatever. You can actually get yourself in a place where you're just sleeping in every day, not doing your food shop, ordering in every night and blah, blah, blah. Like you're just given so much freedom to do whatever you want within reason. I mean, within the house, you know what I mean? So building a routine for me was so important. And it's not something I've particularly had in the past, but when I, when my mental health started struggling with it more and I started, you know, getting more anxious and I had like depression, like, you know, all these things. The routine really, really helps with my mental health. So just to have a purpose and feel like I know what I'm doing, even if it's small, your routine can literally be like waking up in the morning, making your bed and brushing your teeth and brushing your hair. That could literally be your routine. For me, my routine is like waking up in the morning, I always make my bed, obviously brushing my teeth and whatever else, but Part of my routine now includes like exercise, like having a plan for my day. So I actually do that the night before, like make a to-do list of what I wanna do the next day. So I know what I'm doing because I have the tendency to just fill my time with doing nothing, even though I don't know how I get there. Having a, just having a solid routine of what you like to do, what makes you happy. So that could literally be anything like meditating, cooking breakfast, making yourself a coffee, journaling, like writing down things you're grateful for. All these things that seem a bit like hippy dippy and whatever, they really do help. Especially like the whole mindfulness thing, 
it really really helps and I really find that exercise helps me a lot because it just helps me get out there so at the moment I'm trying to do more walks so I'm going on walks and I'm listening to podcasts at the same time so it's like filling my brain with happy positive good vibes first thing in the morning it really really helps me so I feel like building a routine whatever it might be for you is really important number six your only constant in life is you. So make sure you're treating your mind, body, soul with love. We only get one life. Well, at least one life in this body that we're living in right now. So treat yourself with kindness, treat yourself with respect, treat yourself with compassion. A lot of us have the tendency to be very self-deprecating, very harsh on ourselves. A lot of us struggle with anxiety, a lot of us struggle with self-esteem issues and confidence issues and this, that and the other. I get asked constantly like, how how can I be confident? How can I like be like you and X, Y, Z? Obviously I'm not saying com do not compare yourself to strangers on the internet because honestly, you might think you want my life, but <laughs> trust me baby, you, you probably don't. I've said this before a million times but you need to be your own best friend you need to look out for yourself you are in here like I said 24 7 you need to make it a nice place to be fill your mind with happy thoughts first of all you need to stop talking to, to yourself like your piece of shit you need to talk to yourself as you would talk to a best friend your mum your sister anyone do not speak negatively to yourself because when you fill this with negative thoughts what is bound to happen in your life? You're bound to feel negative, you're bound to feel sad. You need to make your mind a nice place to be. So whatever that might be, figuring, however you figure that out to make it nice in here, do it. And also just treating your body with love, like exercising, eating well. Obviously I do like a bit of Nutella myself. I'm not sat here saying that I eat salads 24 seven cause I don't, but I just mean mindfulness. Be mindful with what you're doing, who you're surrounding yourself with, the kind of behavior you're tolerating in your life, the kind of respect that people give you. Be mindful of all these things because this vessel that we have right here, that's it. Like that is it. So you need to make sure you're, you're treating it with respect and with love. You know, it can be really difficult. And listen, I'm sat here telling you all these tips. I also need to be told these tips from time to time. I need to be told these tips too. So don't feel like you're alone. I am not perfect in any way. I definitely need telling all these things from time to time. And that's what life's about, ebbs and flows. Ebbs and flows up and down. Seven, not everybody will love you. And that is okay. This was something that was really fucking difficult for me to get a grasp of because especially in my therapy i've talked about it a lot i just don't i hate being disliked like it's crazy the kind of person i am i think because i know i'm a good person and i know i have a good heart and i know i mean well when people dislike me it actually hits me because i'm like but why 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 would they dislike me why don't they why? Why, why, why like i just i don't get it but in my head at the same time you have to understand not everyone will like you we are all so different. Like we're all such different people. Can you imagine liking every single person you ever met? You can't, you wouldn't. They might be nice people and you still might respect them, but you don't really like them. Like there's no way in life that you could like every single person that you meet. So how do you expect to be liked by every single person? It's just not gonna happen. Again, it's the whole perfectionist thing. We don't need to do that. You're not gonna be liked by everyone and that's okay. That does not make you a bad person. Just because someone doesn't like you, that does not make you a bad person in any way, shape or form. Which goes on to my second point, my next point. Number eight, live by your own standards. Do not live by anyone else's standards. Just because they say you should be doing this and you should be doing that and you should be doing that and you should really think about this and this and that. And Is that your standard? Is that your standard you're setting for yourself? If it's not, then why are you living by it? Why are you fixated on that? Why are you listening to other people tell you what to do with your life? Genuinely, like I'm getting passionate now because genuinely I get told a lot what I should do and you should do this and you should do that and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. At the end of the day, the only person I need to appease is myself. As long as I know I'm not hurting anyone, I'm being a good person, I have a good heart, I do things with good intention, then the only person I need to please is myself. Genuinely. This is not me saying go out there being dickhead. Like I said, do everything with pure intentions, with a good heart. Other people will hold you to certain things and say you need to do that and I'm disappointing you about this and I'm disappointing you about that. Are you disappointed in yourself? Because if you are then address it and do, and do better in your life, but if you're not disappointed by something you've done that someone else is disappointed by, why are you listening to them? Like, you actually only have to live by your own standards for yourself. Because another thing that I realized this year, last year, people are very opinionated. Opinions like ourselves, everyone has one, which is not a bad thing, but everybody thinks their opinion is right. 
See, the thing about me, I'm very open-minded and I'm very self-aware. So it's like, I might have an opinion that the sky is green. Um, but you might have an opinion the sky is purple. And I might acknowledge your opinion that the sky is purple. And I wish I respect that. But some, but you might look at me and I say the sky's green and you'll say you're a fucking disgusting person as if you think the sky's green. A lot of people think their opinion is the only opinion. That was a really bad analogy. You know what my brain's like. But a lot of people think their opinion is the only opinion as the be all and end all. And it's really not. There are so many opinions. Everyone has so many opinions, which is why I say live by your own standards. Because someone else's opinion and that someone else's standards are not going to be the same as yours. So as long as you're being a good person, with a good genuine heart, live by your own standards. Number nine, prioritise your peace. Let go of anything that you feel like is holding you back, holding you in a dark place, not fulfilling a purpose in your life, just not serving you. Let go of those things, whether that be a job, a person, and I know people say, oh, cut this, cut this off if they're not doing this. Um, let's face it, it's not that easy. It's never that easy to do that, but I'm just saying if, if there's a boy or a girl in your life that um, doesn't respect you and has done you dirty in the past and doesn't make you feel good about yourself, you don't need to have them in your life and you don't need to explain yourself to people. You don't need to explain why someone doesn't deserve to be in your life. At the end of the day, I was listening to a podcast this morning that said people will respect you as much as you respect yourself. So it's like if people know they can get away with certain things in your life, they'll do it. And 2020 definitely taught me that some people are assholes. I'm a very optimistic person. I I always see the best in people. I'm very gullible as well. So I believe people, I just have, I'm very trusting. I believe people. And a lot of people are assholes proper assholes. So, and I don't want the world to turn me cynical, but it's worth being aware of certain things like that. And what you can do is set boundaries in place and say, you know what, I don't I don't want you to talk to me like that. I don't want you in my life because you make me feel X, Y, Z, and this, that, and the other. It all comes back to self-awareness as well. Being aware of how certain things make you feel, being aware of your boundaries and what you are willing to take and what you're not willing to take. Prioritize your peace. Honestly, it will make you so happy. And like it says in the title, it will make you peaceful. The last thing that I learned in 2020 was revel in your accomplishments. Whether it be big or small, be proud of what you have achieved. Even if that's just making it through the year and doing a small thing or what feels like a small thing to you, be proud of that. Like, honestly, the other night when I was kind of reflecting on last year, I wrote a list. I took one page of my book and I wrote a whole list of things that I was proud of myself for last year. And some of them were so small but so and some of them were big but they all add up and they all make you you know give some love and appreciation to yourself like be proud of yourself for everything that you've achieved it's really as simple as that it'll help you moving forward to feel good about yourself i help keep pushing you forward that was the video that was the whole video so i hope this helped in some way there should also be a blooper video from last year out now just a real small one i collected some bloopers from some videos that i recorded for like the last six months of last year so I'll go and watch a blooper video it'll give you some laughs for sure thank you so much for watching i will see you very soon with a haul yes i'm gonna be doing a haul and there'll be more hauls coming i hope you enjoyed this and i'll see you very soon with another video bye guys bottoms up chin chin cheerio Oh, actually, while you're here, why don't you watch another video? Watch another video because I know you want to. I know you like listening to me talk. Uh -huh. Why don't you? I'm doing the whole Jackie Anna thing at the end. Maybe I'm a. Maybe I'll start doing this more. Maybe I'll start talking to you at the end. Just click the video, yeah. Okay. Bye.